it's so important that our voices are heard. Only we can stop this ex-gay industry, as I call it. It's a multi-million dollar uh, foundation of lies. And they thrive when they're not challenged if we don't tell the truth. And I think anybody out there who is invested in this and really wants to stop the harm that they're doing and help people both come out of these ex-gay ministries and flourish as out gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender individuals and also just wants to stop the political agenda of trying to pass all these anti-gay laws, needs to stand up and say enough already. We're going to get the facts and defeat Focus on the Families campaign of misinformation. We are here to stand up against this and say, let's focus on the family, all right. Let's focus on the families that are destroyed by the harmful message that gay and lesbian Americans are not whole, that we're not complete people. Let's focus on the families that are ruined because people get married who shouldn't be married and end up getting divorced because focus on the family and love one out. Loves to show you the wedding pictures, but they never show you the divorce papers that are almost the inevitable result of these marriages years later. I say let's focus on the facts. What are the facts? Well, every respected medical and mental health organization in the country says that attempts to change sexual orientation do not work. The American Psychiatric Association says they can cause anxiety, depression, and self-destructive behavior. Let's focus on the failures. Focus on the family is not going to tell the people in this conference that the founders of Exodus International left their wives to marry each other. They're not going to tell the people at this conference that are paying their hard-earned money that the founder of Love One Out, John Paul, was photographed by me in a Washington, D.C. gay bar. They are not going to tell the people that the founder of Homosexuals Anonymous stepped down from his ministry because he was having nude massages with his clients. Yeah, let's focus on the facts, okay? Let's also focus on the fact that they do not keep statistics after all these years because they know if they actually told of the failure rate that goes on within these ministries, they would have been out of business a long time ago. Let's focus on faith. Focus on the family likes to say that they represent religion, but we all know they represent a small, narrow slice of religion, and they demean us and dehumanize us by saying that we are not people of faith and gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender Americans. And finally, let us focus on the fallacies that they are putting forth. In the past year, nearly 10 researchers from the most esteemed universities in this country, from, the, from NYU, from Yale, University of Minnesota, have all come forward to say that James Dobson from Focus on the Family has distorted and twisted their research for political gain. And this is really what this is about. This is an election year. We have an amendment on the ballot to prohibit same-sex marriage and civil unions. We have gay days at Disney. This is an offensive attempt to manipulate people for political gain, to score political points, and not to change anybody from gay to straight, which is not possible, but to change laws to discriminate against gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender Americans. And this is why we stand together today to oppose this agenda. Support for reparative and uh, conversion therapies is founded upon faith. And it's only in the faith community or from the faith community that we hear the condemnation of people whose sexual orientation is not heterosexual. The Bible is used to justify those stands. That Bible has been used to justify oppressive and repressive stances throughout its history. Here in the United States, slavery was supported through the use of scripture. It was only in 1967 that the United States Supreme Court overturned the laws banning uh, interracial marriage, laws that were supported by the use of scripture. Women have been oppressed throughout history using scripture as a justification. Today, gay people are repressed and oppressed using scripture as a justification. I understand that if we walk in love, then we will, in fact, learn how to reach out and grab our neighbor's hand, red, yellow, black, or white, 
homosexual, heterosexual, it does not matter. It, it does not matter. I understand that there is going to be a bridging and a coming together when the true love of God wins out. If it sounds like fear, if it feels like injustice, if it feels like discrimination, if it feels like hate, it's not God. And his love does not abide there. If it feels like conformity, when the Bible tells us not to be conformed, it's not God. Let's rise to the occasion and understand that the true love of God must win out. Thank you. Love Went Out, sponsored by self-proclaimed religious group Focus on the Family, is a conference that stresses that homosexuality is abnormal, sinful, and needs to be changed in order for folks to be right with God. I suppose that Focus on the Family has the right to prey on vulnerable people. However, they also have the right and the responsibility to tell the truth, which they do not, pointed out by Truth Wins Out. The toxic and often dangerous effects of homophobia and hate promoted by the rhetoric of these groups cannot be understated, as evidenced by the astounding suicide rates among gay teens when they no longer feel they can cope with the homophobia and hate they experience in their schools and communities. In Florida, gay and lesbian people are regularly fired because of who they are. Same-sex couples are denied housing opportunities and turned away from public accommodations. Gay parents are afraid for the safety and security of their children as they reside in a state that prohibits gay adoption and demonizes gay parents. In the past three years, as reported by the state, we've seen hate violence increase against the gay and lesbian community exponentially. Most often we've seen that increase in the most violent of categories. Last year, just a few miles away from where we stand right now, in Polk County, Florida, Ryan Keith Skipper was murdered because of who he was. He was stabbed over 20 times, his throat was slit, and he was left for dead on the side of the road, simply because he had the audacity to live openly and honestly. Exodus International needs to own Ryan's death. Exodus needs to own the laws and policies in this state that continue to demonize the lives and experiences of gay and lesbian people. We've got to stand up and be the now voice. If not us, then who? If not now, then when? It's time out for all of this. Let me make you change to conform to something that you have no idea. And using the word of God to perpetuate a lie and fear, it's no longer tolerated. Exodus International and the other reparative therapy ministries do great harm. That evil will prevail unless you and I have the courage to stand up and speak out. Truth will overcome that evil. But that truth needs voice. That truth needs our voices. It's crucial for us to speak out with the truth. That in fact, gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people are not only okay, but that their forms of love, their expressions of sexuality, are a natural part of the sexual continuum. The only way that we're going to change the world and that we're going to change the way that people think about the gay and lesbian community is to be open about it and to talk about our experiences and to and to um, really challenge the status quo. You know, you've got to be. We have to be out and we have to share these experiences because otherwise, they're painting the picture of who we are, and we need to be the ones with the paintbrush. We're here as a community, I think, to to help and to stop other families from being divided in the name of family values.